I wanted to talk about uh, the value of unpressured food sources. In fact, there's a tale of two properties. Um, and I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about, I mean, we've, we've had some incredible opportunities on late season food sources where we collect deer as gun season and muzzleloader progresses while other, property are lose, other properties are losing deer. Now most properties lose deer and, and food plots are largely to blame with that. We're gonna have another video about food plot checkup for this time of year. But if your food plots are not collecting deer at this time of year, then there's something going on wrong. Either it's the type of food you have, your covers being pressured, and your food plots are being pressured. We've had some outstanding opportunities throughout the years on monster bucks um, over food plots. And I can say I've, I've had some, some of my major mess ups have been over food plots late season where you plan on a certain buck. I think it was 2010 where I had a giant eight point that I was after. He was pushing 170. Um, he would have been six years old at that time. He ended up dying as an eight year old. But uh, he came out on a food plot early December, muzzleloader, and I just plain missed him. And so we've had some times, but if you have mature bucks around, they're going to hit those food sources. And right now, Diane's actually sitting in the redneck. We're sitting out here behind. We can do this because we're locating their blinds. It's, it's a almost a cliff walking off right here. We go through the goldenrod where we can sneak in and out of this redneck and not spook the deer that are on this, this food plots down here. And the power of an unpressured food plot has the ability to make your season. And it's not just right now during November and December, late November, December, when deer are recuperating and they're coming into these plots and they're starting to collect because there's a lot of pressure around the area and they're gravitating to cover and food that's not being pressured um, but it affects your entire season you know if we waited for our food only to be ready in December we would have missed September October November the rut the pre-rut and the entire buildup of the season and the ability to actually hold and collect bucks and protect them as as it went in through the rut and into this late season and it, and it would hurt our ability to uh, develop a quality herd unpressured food sources you have to have November food sources. We rely highly on greens because greens can provide nutrition and they can set the table for consistent use for the entire season for the afternoon feeding slot. Always keep in mind, and I mention, mention this often, that deer feed five times in a 24 hour period. Feedings one and two would be in daylight in their bedding areas, morning and early afternoon. And then feeding three is the most important of the day and that's on their quality food source that they want to bed near and hit every single afternoon. So if your food sources are pressured out and they're not feeding till after dark, guess what? That means that they're feeding on someone else's property on that third feeding of the day and it's going to take them a while to get to your property and your ability to not only have a great herd but to have a great hunt is significantly reduced. So the third feeding of the day is the most important and then if you have like around here or if you have open hardwoods, you have stands of acorns on public land around you that you're hunting, then those deer are going to go out of their bedding areas into the preferred afternoon food source and then they're going to flock out after their herd out into some of these ag fields around here and that's where they're at all night. It's a safe and social area and that's where they're going to hit at night and that becomes their fourth and fifth feedings of the day. And really when it comes down to it, think about whitetails and how much they move during a given day. They're gonna move two to 300 yards during daylight for the entire season outside of the rut. That means you wanna be close to the afternoon food source. And you can extend that greatly if you're in a wilderness area up north. Those big woods deer are gonna travel a half mile to a mile every day. I've seen it many times over. And if you're in Northern Ohio where there's hardly any cover, let's say average 40 acres of cover per section of land, 640 acres, then that 40 acres of cover, those deer might be used, used to just moving 100 yards to their f preferred food source. Areas out west where you have ribbons of uh, bottom land, river bottoms or creek bottoms flanked by just miles and miles of ag, those deer are going to be sandwiched into a small area and they're going to move very, very little during daylight hours. Around here in mixed ag land, we're looking at two to 300 yards, sometimes 400 yards at the move on a daily basis. So if you think about that, you don't have to have a lot of cover. You don't have to have a lot of woods in cover to actually hold deer during the day, send them to that afternoon food source because the bulk of their movements and their daily movements, say a buck that has a three mile home range, is going to be after dark and after shooting hours. So you're only concerned about during that day if you have those unpressured food sources. We rely on green because if we have a diversity of green, if you just check out my 
2016 best food plot mix, 2017, 18, 19. It'll give you an example of how I'm managing those food plots, what we're looking for, and offering enough diversity that lasts the entire season. You can compete with the big boys around with beans and corn. We do it every year. And it's all about keeping those food sources unpressured. If you keep them unpressured, that stockpiles your bedding areas. If you keep your stand locations unpressured, you're rotating your stands properly, you're really leaving very little scent signature on the way in and out of your stand locations. For example, here we could smell like a pig. It really doesn't matter because our wind's blowing off a cliff. We're hunting in a scent containment blind right here. The deer are not gonna get downwind of us anyway. They're 200 yards that way. And so really when you're on stand, don't worry about your scent there. Really pay attention to how much scent you're laying into the woods. But again, it all starts with those unpressured food sources. If you have those, you can fill your bedding areas to travel in between. If you don't have unpressured food sources, it destroys your entire property. And if you have private land and you're relying on sticks and twigs and hardwood browse and mass crop to set that number three feeding, you're grossly mistaken. They deer want something else besides roughage and something that's hard to digest. Even corn is tough to build a, a herd on or beans because it's hard to digest. They love those greens. It's something that you can build a property on every single year. That's what we do. We're gonna get back in this redneck because Diane is right in here right now. She snuck in while we're making some videos here and we both brought our guns today, but she's gonna be the hunter. We have the cameras right here. We're gonna watch these unpressured food sources. She's been having some does come out into these every single night and there will be a buck as we're sliding closer to the secondary rut coming out into these food plots. I hope you have unpressured food plots. They are golden when it comes to deer hunting and creating a quality herd and we're going to look out here and see what happens if you like food plot strategies i have a food plot strategy playlist i think there's at least 40 videos maybe even closer to 50 that are in that playlist i have a, a food plot book out food plot success by design it's highly rated on uh, amazon we sell it from our website i encourage you to buy it from our website we also have an ebook form I have five books out, six book coming soon, and I hope you like those. I hope you like this channel. I hope you like this unpressured food plot strategy because if you don't have unpressured food plots, you're really missing out, and I want to see you have them because it is a lot of fun. We're going to hopefully have some fun tonight and see Diane shoot her first buck.